Hello students, I trust that you all are taking care of yourself in this crisis time. My name is Miss Jane and I'll be taking your SS, that is History and Disaster Management. And this will be your SS1 and today I will explain your first chapter, that is the French Revolution. Okay, French Revolution. Revolution means a forcible overthrow of a government or social order. Revolution can teach one boy the nena sarkar in tlak tut na. Friends ram khan tinge ing vangin nge revolution angay na chan. A chan zu friends ram po ka lel ro rel na nuaya anom ve ani. They were under the monarchical rule. Monarchy is a form of government in which a person, the monarch, is the head of state. Okay, French Revolution, it is probably the most important topics of the world history because it has influenced the modern world to a huge extent. Okay, let us begin by knowing what exactly is the French Revolution. So, the French Revolution was a 10-year period of events in France from 1789 to 1799 that leads to wide-ranging political and social chains not only in France but also on the entire modern world. The 19th and 20th century had been hugely influenced by the French Revolution and its ideas. What the revolution did was it abolished the monarchy. There was a king earlier in France. So now after this revolution, there was no more king. France was made a republic. Republic is a country or a nation set in which head of state is elected and is not hereditary. It means the head of state earlier was king, but now he was elected. Finally, after some years, this republic ended in dictatorship of Napoleon Bonaparte. Dictatorship can teach one, mani to mga rural tu. So, it started with monarchy, with king. Then it became a republic during French Revolution and finally during the French Revolution itself Napoleon took over France and he became a dictator. So the revolution ended up again under dictatorship. Okay, now we came to the causes of this French Revolution. There are lots and lots of theory regarding the causes of this French Revolution. Historians has given many causes. It has been studied for past 200 years. But every, even today, after 20 years, people are still writing books on the causes of this French Revolution. But for our purpose, to make it simple, I will divide into four parts. Okay, uh, Number one, political cause. Number two, social cause, economic cause, and then we go to intellectual cause, okay? And now, firstly, I will begin with the political causes. The ruling dynasty in France was the Bourbon dynasty. Bourbon rulers were often called as despots. What do you mean by despots? Despots is a dictator who has no power, anyone controlling him or whatsoever. No constitution, no parliament, no minister, nothing. Whatever the king wants to do, he will do. Whatever he wishes to do, he can do and he will do it. So that is a despot and he does not care about the people. Uh, the basic thing about this spot is that they did not care about the greater growth of the society. Okay, they did not care for the welfare of the people. 
they only care about themselves. Uh, so this is why they were called despots. So there were two Bourbon kings during those period, namely Louis XIV from 1643 to 1715 and Louis XVI, 15, I mean, from 1715 to 1774. Uh, Okay, they are often called as despots for Louis XIV ruled for a long period of time from uh, 1643 to 1715, almost 70 years. He was often called as absolute despots. No power kept him in check. Whatsoever he centralized the power in uh, France to a large extent. And he reduced the powers of the feudal lords. Remember, in the Middle Ages, in Europe, feudal lords had a lot of power. They want many government, uh, but Louis XIV centralized the power of France and he reduced the power of these uh, feudal lords. Okay? He also fought many wars. Lots of wars was fought under Louis XIV, and he won in many of these battles, and enhancing the stage of this France. And uh, France won a lot of battle with him. But however, in a war, what did we need in a war? Money, isn't it? Money is always required. And as money was not there, so he took loans. And due to this, uh, France went in debt to a have um, in debt. France went into a heavy debt due to the war of this Louis uh, fourteen. Okay, then we came to Louis fifteen. After the death of Louis fourteen, he ruled in France between. 1715 to 1774 during his time the seven years war was fought it was fought with england also louis 15 was not a very good administrator he was not capable of this running the country in a very good manner so that these problems of seven years war was uh could not be solved okay that was all about this uh louis 15 and then we came to another king that is louis 16. he ruled from 1774 to 1792. he in his uh his intentions were good but he did not bring bold reforms. Reforms were required because France economy was failing very bad. But he could not make or take any decisions and keep uh, on them. He backtracked from decisions. One day he took up one decision and the next day he will say, No, 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 let's not do it. Okay. So, his personality was like that. Also, his wife, Queen Mary Antoinette, uh, she was from Austria. She was a very bad advisor. The reason behind that, she was not in touch with the ground reality. How people lived and what are the difficulties of the people. And uh, did not allow her husband to talk with the common people. Very bad, isn't that? Okay, on top of that, then the, then there was a American War of Independence. So, America was fighting with Britain from the 1776 to 70, and France helped America. The reason is that because it learned defeated them in Seven Years' War. Okay, means France also learned the ideas of this France, uh, I mean, revolutions from American War of Independence. Okay, Hemi Chang Hian, Ma Niram Tan, Chanem Ngai Na, Alopianga, Nge, 
lalpay thak du na an lo nei ta ni they wanted to change this france okay and now we go to this uh, social causes division of france society was called ancien regime so according to this ancien regime the france society was divided into three parts okay the first is that the second uh, the first is that where the clergy the church the people of church uh, they constitute around this one leg that means they are around 10 person okay and then the second class were the nobility this they were the uh a few the lords and then uh, they constitute about four legs and around they were around 25 person and we go to the third estate the third estate has everyone they are artisans factory workers traders lawyers and political officials they constitute around 2.7 crore and uh, their population is around 95 person okay and then from these two classes that is the first and the second is that no taxes were paid okay they lead a very luxurious life this uh, lavish lifestyle and then tax were paid only by the third is that how heavy it would be isn't it because most people uh, they were very what to say uh, most people lived in a very miserable life and poor life, no political or social privileges. They were no mm, given any social or political recognitions in the ancient regimes. Their life, the third is that the life of the third is that was very, very miserable. Okay. Okay. Now we go to the economic cause. So the rising populations of France, which was two crore in 1700, and it has gone up to about 2.8 crore in 1789. So when increasing more population, we need more food. Uh, we need more food to feed them, to feed the people, isn't it? So these uh, people are increasing and the land is the same and there was no scientific advancement in agriculture uh, so the land is given the same amount of grains that uh, was given in 1700 uh, so this population explosions cannot be sustained uh, so populations increase and if no food to feed the people what will the people do they will die of famine isn't it so uh, it happens a lot of time during those period. There was hard winters, crop failures, food prices increased. This leads to famine. This happened in 1789 as well. Uh, so prices of these essential commodities rise and uh, poor people cannot afford this. And uh, people died of the starvation. So because of all these reasons, the peasants and the common people were angry and no advancement in technology. Half of the total budget went to uh, debt repayment due to seven years were. So the common people were angry and the farmers were dying of hunger. Okay, that's all about these economic causes. Okay, then we came to the intellectual cause. The 17th and 18th century are the age of this enlightenment. Enlightenment means awakening to the true nature of reality. Many philosophical thinkers, they started rational thinkings. They came and developed the science, uh, the philosophy. They started rational thinkings. They wrote books about it. These famous philosophers were John Locke, he was a British philosopher. Then there was Jean-Jacques Rousseau, 
he wrote about the people's sovereignty. Then there is Immanuel Kant, he was a German philosopher. Then there was Montesquieu, he was a Frenchman. He wrote about the separation of church and the state. He says that the church and the state should be completely separated. Then there is Voltaire. He wrote about the freedom of speech and expressions. So all these are radical thinkers. They are intellectuals. They wrote books and their books were spreading far and wide. People in France came to know about these ideas. And it was since the advent of this printing press, books were printed widely and spreading them easily. So this intellectual started to question the king's right to rule. He is mandated from God, role of the Catholic Church. Okay, all this, uh, let's see what the king says, okay? The king says that we have mandated from God, mandated from heaven. God asks to rule over this country. These nations, kingdom, or the people of this area, we have been assigned by God, so it is our duty to follow God's instruction. This is all what the king says, isn't it? Okay, but let's see what the people says, okay? But the people started to question them. Who has given you this authority? Why do you rule over us? What is the proof that God, have, uh, God has given authority to rule over us? What is the rule of the church? And all these uh, questions, such questions were very difficult to answer for the king, isn't it? And the church. So questions were started to get popularity among the people news, by newspapers, by books of philosophers, and the salon discussion is going on, discussing ideas. Uh, they read books, newspaper, and then they began to get consciousness, okay? Okay, lastly, let's see the timeline of this French Revolution. So, the timeline of this uh, French Revolution goes like this. In 1789, the king of France, Louis XVI, called the Estat General. Then in 1789 to 91, the National Assembly ruled over France. In 1791 to 92, the Legislative Assembly ruled for one year. Then it was dissolved itself one year. And in 1792 to 95, the National Convention was formed. This National Convention ruled for three years. During this time, there was one year that was called the Reign of Terror from 1795 to 98. Then there was a directory rule. And finally, in 1799, there was a Cop d'Etat by Napoleon Bonaparte. And he started his military dictatorship in France. Okay. Ole kati zongka voina kan zir taituni se. And for your homework, I would like to give you two short answer. Ka explain na chan hiyan in lao chai don ya. Oh. Okay. Number one is who was Louis XVI? Le. And the second one is, what were the problems of the third aesthetic huh? in Lao Chai Donia? Okay, stay home, save life, do regular physical exercise and always keep in touch with your books.